People doing small things is like an inspiration to me. I think people sometimes don't realize how they can be inspiring other people, even if you don't know them. There's a young kid that's been going to my gym and I and he's he's probably like 13, 14 years old. And I'm like, I love that. And that pushes me. Welcome to Ignite Your Passion with me, Bonnie Lang. My guest today is Elsa Diaz. She is a professional golfer. Take a listen to this inspiring interview. So tell us, how's it going? Hey, it's going good. We're, um, well, I guess we'll tell people that I am a professional golfer and um, things are going good. We're kind of winding down towards the season. So this is kind of during the time where we get to kind of take a little bit of a break. Um, from all the traveling and all the tournaments. Um, so things are good. I'm back at home. I'm looking forward to the holidays. Um, and I'm excited to kind of, you know, get next year started. Yes, yes. Well, so tell us then about your your career. So what ignited your passion for this? So I was kind of joking with my boyfriend that I was going to tell you this, that um, the older I get, the more I realize that I probably like deep down really wanted to be like a rock star and golf was kind of the closest thing that could, that could get me to it. Um, I have a big passion for music, but you know, I think, uh, growing up, I was in theater and I love the aspect of performing in front of people, but I was also in sports. I played basketball, played volleyball. I ran, um, I did a lot of different things um, in, in the sports world. And I remember I must have been like 10 years old or 11 where I was like, I just wish I could just marry both of them. I wish I could just do both of them. And um, my um, my father, when I was uh, nine, had started putting us in this golf program called the First Tee. And the First Tee is um, a program that teaches life skills through the game of golf. So through golf, they teach us all about edit etiquette and responsibility and perseverance and judgment. And it was right around this time where um, I had kind of taken up the sport. And again, I had been in golf in the beginning. I didn't really like it, but I think it was just because I didn't understand um, what was so great about this sport. So um, around that time, I told you that I was like, how can I like Mary, like the, the, the performing in front of people and like what I feel when I'm acting and also um, the sport. And then it's kind of once I started playing golf, I kind of started seeing that I was like, this is this is kind of it. You know, this is I it's an individual thing, which is what I liked about, um, you know, the theater part, because I had, you know, you you're you know, you're your own actor. And um, and then it also had like the athletic part of it. And um, when I was in the first T you there's different levels and you have to be passing tests and you have to be performing well and you you know it, the program teaches you how to, to you know prepare yourself to go to the next level and when I was 16 17 I qualified for a, a big tournament where they let junior golfers play with professional golfers it was held at Pebble Beach and Bonnie I remember I went there and when I was standing in that tournament, you know, they have the golf channel and they're interviewing you and they treat you like a true oh, pro. Wow. <laughs> and I remember just having this feeling that I was like, this is it. This is what I am meant to do. This is what I'm meant to chase. Um, and, and it was right then where I was like, um, you know, this is exactly kind of where I got my, you know, my answer. Oh my gosh. Well, I love it. You know what? So let's talk about then where you're from. So where did you grow up? And you're living in San Antonio now, mm -hmm. um, but where did you grow up? So my parents actually did a very interesting thing. My dad is from San Diego, California, and my mom's from Mexico. Um, and they had us over here. My sibling and my, si my, I have a sister and a brother. They were both, both born in California. I was born here in Texas. Um, but my parents wanted us to grow up in the Mexican culture. My mom wanted us to grow up amongst our cousins. So we actually lived in Mexico while I was growing up. So Spanish was my first language and um, the Mexican culture was kind of like the, you know, what I knew. And then when I was seven, my dad said, okay, it's time to go back. So we came back to the United States and kind of like restarted our whole lives. You know, um, I, my dad didn't want us to didn't want to teach us English when we were over there because he knew we would eventually learn it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so when we moved here, it was a huge culture shock. Um, but, you know, that was kind of where we use school and sports to kind of just, you know, kind of get in the culture. And, um, and, and the first T, why it's so big in our lives is because we, it was a place where we felt like we could be ourselves. And it was a place where we were accepted, even if we didn't know that much English. And um, the three of us were there, like, you know, me and my two siblings. So the first team became a really big program. And I think that's probably where, you know, other than the becoming a golfer, um, I think the first team also had such an emotional impact on our growing up and, you know, us feeling like we could be whoever we wanted to be. So you continued that or did you end up having other jobs? alongside I mean how, I mean so you just kept going with golf yes yes so I so I played high school golf and then I played for the University of Richmond um, I got a full golf scholarship there which was a huge dream of mine to just pay for school with golf um, and I graduated in 2018 and a day after my last tournament of college golf I turned pro so I was I was ready to go I was ready to kind of go and keep chasing it because I, I really liked college golf but I knew you know that moment back when I had my aha moment I knew I just wanted to play golf at the highest possible level so uh, I turned pro as soon as I could <laughs> how does that work like at what point do you turn pro like yeah it's a very personal um it's a kind of a very personal timing. You know, I know a couple of girls that um, they graduated and they wanted to keep playing amateur golf, which just really means you just can't win money when you play. Okay. Um, but I just, I love the, the idea of just being able to kind of use that money to kind of throw it back into some other tournaments. So you really just sign up for a tournament and you say, hey, from this point on, I'm going to be considered pro. So your entry fees are higher, but now you can accept sponsorships. And um, I knew that uh, coming out of college, I was going to need as much help as, as possible. And I like the, that side of sports as well, that, you know, you have sponsorships and you can work with organizations. Um, so I, I entered into an LPGA tournament, which is our highest tour. Um, and that's when I said, from this day on, I'm going to play professionally and I'm just, you know, going to win and play golf for a living. That's incredible. I love that you're doing what you love. Oh, you, and you, you just like look so happy. Like when I've seen you, you're just like just a ray of sunshine. And even on your Instagram, you know, <laughs> you're just like, I love it. I love your vibe. Thank you. Now you were talking about sponsorships. Now you had mentioned like before we got on the call that you have had sponsors. So how do you approach that? So when I graduated, um, my sister was at Richmond with me at the time, and I knew that I was going to need a lot of help. So what we did was that we literally just did a lot of cold calling. I mean, I think thankfully I was in a really cool place that the, the University of Richmond has a great alumni program. And because I was a spider, um, a Richmond spider, I had a lot of uh, people that wanted to help me. Um, when I was in college, I practiced at a golf, the, our golf course, but I also waitressed there and I did my internship there. So I had a lot of people that like knew what I was trying to do, knew I wanted to play professionally. So there were people that were kind of trying to help me out. But my sister um, kind of became or pretty much became my manager. And we just got to calling people and asking people and uh, we knew other golfers that had turned pro and hey how do you get money we just you know we asked everybody knocked on doors my sister had a full-time job so for that whole summer after you know, I graduated 2018 that whole summer it was just trying and trying and meetings here and meetings there and it was a big more than anything we learned that a lot of the these meetings it was just for us to learn right like okay what can we do even if we were asking for money and they said, I can't. Sometimes a meeting led to another meeting, you know, and, oh, um, and, and meeting somebody else. And my sister um, got me to go to a tournament and it was just one of those like, you know, universe things. I, I went to a tournament and I got paired up. It was kind of like a charity tournament. And I got paired up with somebody who had worked for a company called Markel. And um, Mark, Mark, this gentleman told me, hey, Markel is going to have a uh, their own tournament you should come and say hello so I did and right around the time me and my sister 
uh, had this idea of throwing like Elsa Goes Pro because I had a lot of people that were interested in my career. Uh, we wanted to do a little party at the golf course and the golf course provided the venue and they provided hors d'oeuvres um, because I had been there for four years. So they knew me well. So we did this party and um, and we had invited a bunch of people, including Markel. And so Markel came to the event and they said, hey, we really like your story. You know, the, we spoke at the event and um, then Markel gave me a great three years with them. I had their sponsorship. I had their backing and it was just exactly what I needed. It was just the the best three years to just, just go out and try and learn as much as you can. Um, so I did that for three years and I, and they were my sole sponsor. So that was really nice because they, they covered everything that I needed help with. Um, but, you know, I think sponsorship is just very interesting when it comes as an athlete, um, as I'm sure, you know, in your world, um, some girls have their uncle who's a lawyer and the law firm sponsors them. Some girls, you know, they meet somebody else and they want to help them. Some, Sometimes people can't actually pay your expenses, but they, they'll, hey, I'll help you with your clothes, you know, and they'll, they'll provide clothes. And so you kind of, the cool and I guess the cool and the rough part about it is that you can kind of like pick and choose and somehow kind of collect everything. Yeah. Um, but that summer, that 2018, where we found those sponsors, it was just knocking on doors over and over until it kind of, you know, until the world kind of helps you, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so that, that in itself was a ride. I mean, it was just, it was a lot, but, uh, but we learned a lot and I think we got a good handle, um, from that experience of what it takes to do that now. So, um, so, so yeah. So what do you find the most rewarding about your path, this path that you chose? I think the most rewarding part about it has been just everything and all the experiences you gain from, from just doing it like let's not even say like the winning part of it you know just how when you are trying to get to something and do something where it all takes you where it all like forces you to grow in different areas um I think that's what's been the most rewarding it's it, it, a lot of like the little problems don't really seem like like you know like big problems when in the past they did yeah um, and it's it it's just the the people that you meet the the uh, the situations that you have to kind of put yourself in and eventually you have to become comfortable with and also just um you know maybe things that I used to kind of hesitate to do just because there was that little embarrassment or a little bit of uncertainty and you you just have to step up to the plate and now you're just so much more brave, you know? So I think that's kind of been what's so rewarding. Like, I think when you're moving forward towards a goal, it's so rewarding to look back and be like, man, you know, I've really changed. I've really had to, you know, do things differently um, just to kind of get closer to my goal, to my dream, you know? Do you actually set goals? I mean, do you actually sit down and say, this is my three-year goal, my five-year goal? I do. Um, I don't know why sometimes like the word goal to me sounds like so dry. And I've always said, I'm like, I'm a big dreamer. I'm just, <laughs> I have my big goal and, and that's what it is. But I think sometimes when I set some goals, I think I understand that as I've done this, that things change, you know, yeah. and um, sometimes you can reach those goals quickly. And sometimes you just can't because there was an injury. And um, so I, I'm a, I, I feel like I'm kind of a person that says, you know, like, um, and I think this is golf has made me this way, like, okay, well, I want to get stronger, you know, I mean, I want to get stronger by next season. And I don't really have that big of an issue to like, you know, I'm, I'm getting to the gym every single day now, yeah, you know, yeah. so maybe I do set these like little goals everywhere I go. Um, but I think, I think maybe I just do them a little bit more, more than I like, you know, realize. And I think that I've kind of always been that way like I remember I started going to the gym early on like I think maybe in sixth grade like five o'clock in the morning and it's just those like little mundane things um are things that it's just it's like you just have to do them they can't even be your big problem anymore because you're just trying to kind of figure out what your next move is going to be so you have to make sure those things are checked off you know so yeah my big goal really is still obviously to get to the LPGA play in the big one play in the big tour 
But like I said, I think I've taken a path and I've kind of realized, ooh, this wasn't, this isn't getting me to where I go. So I have to backtrack and I'll take another path. Yes, you know, so yeah. I think sometimes I do set goals, but I make them very, very wiggly, if you want to say, you know, you when have to do kind of when did you realize that it's not that it's time to redo I mean restructure your goal I think <clears throat> well I think what what has happened to me is that um I think sometimes as as I was going through my career um I would example this is a this would be a perfect example when I was a junior golfer I was so like hardcore I was so like <laughs> focused and nobody talked to me and all this <laughs> and you know I had to you know and I would get um if I was practicing and somebody would interrupt me I'd just be like you know and I would oh. go through a lot of like different emotions and until and then I kind of realized that I was like this isn't this isn't the kind of golfer that I want to be like this is not the kind of golfer that I want to be I don't want to be so rigid I want to be able to kind of like you know be able to talk to people and then when I go play I can focus yeah. um so that's that was like a perfect example where I realized that my personality and golf weren't the same. So then when I went to college, I was like, I want to be Elsa on the golf course. So then that's kind of where I started like realizing that, you know, as you're kind of growing into the dream, there's little things that just don't quite match up, you know, and I didn't want because of other golfers that I had met, I had met a couple of golfers that they sacrificed everything for this one sport. And that's when I realized I was like, okay, I don't want to be that kind of person. So maybe yeah. like, I do want to be the best in the world, but if it means not having any friends and not having my, like not having a good relationship with my family, eh, that's very important to me. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Like if I'm top 10 in the world and I'm doing what I'm doing, cause my dad's my coach. So if I'm doing with what I'm doing with my dad, and I can, you know, do a couple of things, I'll, I'll be content. So I think while I was maturing, I was realizing some other things were also very important in my life. And that was kind of like how I've like made little adjustments, if that makes sense. Yes, yes, it does. Incredible. What do you, so you had mentioned that you go to the gym and I've seen on Instagram, you posting your pictures, even mm -hmm. when you're traveling, you're in the hotel's gym and I see you working out, you know? <laughs> so tell us, what is your routine? Like, how do you stay fit? What's the best workout for you as a golfer? Um, definitely, I try to go, I think when, if I say that I go to the gym every day, it sounds really crazy, but I really just go because when I was in college, I met this wonderful trainer named Glenn Pfluger, and he taught me the importance of going to the gym for injury prevention. So a lot of time I go to the gym, not so much to get a crazy workout in, but it's more to make sure that because I swing and I ask so much out of my body to make sure it kind of stays balanced. So a lot of times, example, I'll go to the gym in the morning. So I'm pretty, so I'm already kind of warmed up for when I go to practice. And in that way, um, one, I don't get hurt. And two, I've already kind of got, kind of gotten my whole body movement, you know, kind of for the day. And then when I'm at tournaments, when I, when you play in tournaments, you kind of put your body at risk for any kind of pulls and, you know, wacky shots and your body's tired because, you know, it's been banged up. So I'll go to the gym to kind of rework those muscles that I might've overstretched um, and just try to kind of stay agile and moving because, you know, with so how much I ask out of my body, I know that, you know, it can stiffen up and the next day I'll be a little bit tighter. So it's more of kind of trying to care for my body than actually like doing a lot of workouts. When I work yeah. out, I have one or two exercises where I'm maxing out, where I'm trying to build a lot more muscle. But other than that, it's really just for, um, for, for injury prevention purposes. Do you also watch what you eat or is that? I like do. Yeah, I do. So my father, who's my coach, he's also a chiropractor and we were raised to, um, to, you know, to eat very healthy and try to pay attention to what we eat because it has a lot of effect on you know, everything that we do. So um, when I was in college, I had really bad seasonal allergies and I didn't want to take any medication for it. So what I started doing was really watching my diet 
Um, and I kind of started seeing what would affect it and what wouldn't and how I would have maybe cleaner energy on the road. And I didn't want to be having an upset stomach when I'm on the road either. So all those things were kind of coming into, into kind of what I was feeding my body and eventually kind of got to being like the paleo diet. Um, a lot of, you know, I do eat a lot of protein and I also eat a lot of vegetables. I throw in a little fruit here and there, but, and, but that's kind of about it. I don't really do a lot of carbs. I don't do anything processed. I don't even eat. Like I try to stay away from the energy bars because they upset, upset my stomach. So, um, I will say it's a lot of work, uh, but it's, it's kept me healthy. It keeps my gut healthy. Um, and, and I, I feel like a lot of my energy, um, on the golf course co comes from that. So, um, I've, I've been very happy with it a lot, definitely a lot of test runs, trial and error, you know, I think for six years, I've been very, very rigid about it. I'm just watching everything that I eat. Um, but, uh, but it's kept me healthy and, um, you know, away from getting sick too often. And so how long have you been, how long have you been playing golf? since I was nine and I'm 26. So 17 years, which is crazy to think about. And I've been a professional. I'm on my fourth year. Oh, okay. incredible. So tell us about your, your training. So do you actually, you said your father actually coaches you. Mm -hmm. And so do you do practice every day or how often do you do that? Yeah, I practice every single day. Um, so what I'll do is that with my dad, we're very mechanically driven. So with my dad, I'll do about like one or two hours every single day with him. Um, unless, you know, unless he's busy uh, with whatever, but it's pretty much every single day. And then I dedicate several hours of just being on my own and practicing um, on a, like at a, a golf course or a golf range. Mm -hmm. so was your dad a golfer as well? He, he, so my dad's been golfing since he was 30. He's almost 60 now. Um, but my dad always had an interest for the biomechanics of the golf swing. He had a lot of patients that had neck and back problems because of golf. And that's where his curiosity kind of took off. He was saying, why are these golfers getting hurt? And so what he wanted to learn was if there was a way to create a swing that would not hurt your back or your neck and you could just play freely without any kind of pain and when he started doing this obviously he started learning about the greats and there's um there was one guy who's known to own the golf swing and he uh, he's always said that if you're ever straining something it's because you're overusing it so my dad started really studying the biomechanics of golf and he started teaching us what he was learning and that's when i started using what he was teaching me and I noticed that I could play at a very high level against girls with very little experience when I was a junior golfer so that's kind of where like me and my dad's story kind of became began and we've been doing that ever since that's so incredible to get to work with your family so closely I guess it has its pluses and minuses sometimes but <laughs> <laughs> but mostly pluses right <laughs> yeah it's been it's been great I mean I knew I do know I like I often tell people I know my dad is probably the only coach that I can call at like two o'clock in the morning and be like dad fix my swing and he'll get up and do it you know and oh. I get unlimited lessons here because I'm I've lived here with my parents and you know he he'll come yeah. in and tell me something so that's nice it's like an un unlimited you know lessons which is really cool I've really enjoyed working with my dad it's brought us really close oh I love that so then tell us what it is like before a game, like when you're getting ready to compete, you know, on that day, what is your routine throughout that entire day? Do you meditate or, you know, is there anything special that you do to get yourself ready? You know, I've, um, I'm, I am a person of like, I don't really have a routine. I, I stay away from routine. Like routine is a little boring to me. So I'm a person who, I don't have very specific things that I do. I wake up some mornings and I'm like, okay, I gotta, maybe I'll put today first, or maybe I gotta go hit the range, whatever is kind of, I kind of let my mind kind of tell me or what I'm feeling a little bit. If I, you know, some days I don't stretch very intensely. And then some days I wake up and I'm very tight. So I'll do it. And I've never wanted to rely on my routine. Uh, to play because I I've oh I was always concerned of those people that's like oh if I don't get 
you know, my perfect coffee or my perfect breakfast. I can't have a good day on the golf course. And I just wanted to stay away from that. I wanted to just be able to like, I should be able to have a good day regardless of what happens in the morning. So, but the one thing that I do do is I always call my dad. I'll, uh, sometimes I call him before warming up. Sometimes I call him after warming up. Um, there's been a couple of tournaments where I'm, I feel great and I'm ready to go tee it off. And I was like, it feels weird. I haven't called him. So I'm just like, okay, I'm about to deal. <laughs> but it's always, you know, I, I was, I was kind of thinking about what I, you know, if there's anything, the one thing that never changes and it's always calling my dad. Yeah. Oh, and if I don't call him, he calls me, which is great. <laughs> I love it. So what have you found most challenging for you in your journey? And then how did you overcome it? Yeah, I think the hardest part has been for me the like on an everyday kind of well every day and and just overall I think kind of learning where enough practice is enough practice either for the day or for the week or for the month. I think you know we we get told that you have to put in you have to work hard and I've kind of always had that in my mind. But as I'm getting older and as I'm, you know, kind of learning this, that just because I practice, you know, three or four hours, doesn't mean I have to practice until I'm dead, until I just, I can't practice anymore. <laughs> I used to do that a lot. And then I was too tired for my personal life. I was too tired to do the administration part that comes with golf. I was too tired for my relationships. And so I did that a lot when I was a pro and I, I mean, when I first started and I kind of had like a little bit of an aha moment that I was like, okay, if I'm practicing all the time, what am I, I'm, I feel like I'm constantly telling my mind that I'm not ready. And I do think that there has to be a point where you're just like, okay, I've done enough for the day and now I can just put it away and do my other stuff. Yeah. And I read an Arnold Palmer book, Arnold Palmer's Big Golfer Hall of Famer. And he said in one of his chapters, you have to learn when to walk away from practice at like, I got oh, a good wow. point because I do think that I would practice and practice and I would be like the only one out there. And I do think that a lot of the practice I've put into has led me to where I am now. But I definitely think that as of lately, because I'm here with my parents and I want to help cook, I want to help my mom cook and all that. I, I finish at just like at a good point. And then um, I come home, I get to enjoy my personal life. And then I notice that my brain still has enough energy for different ideas or the thing that I was trying to figure out at practice when I'm kind of a little bit more relaxed, it kind of comes. So I've, so I, I see where, what Arnold Palmer was trying to say, because now that I, now that my mind's not like oh, so tight, you yeah. know, hanging <laughs> on to the dream so tight that yeah. you just don't allow for that you know, for those thoughts or for just enjoyment of, you know, the other things in life. I love that about hanging on too tight because you can do that. And I find myself doing that sometimes and it's like, wait, whoa, you know, it's just, yeah, totally, yeah. totally relate to you. So what was a win that you were so happy about? The biggest win that I, have, I was very, very happy about was when I won, um, a college tournament by myself individually. Um, my team won that day too, which was super cool. But this this win was so important to me because one, I can say that as a Richmond Spider, you know, I kind of did something for the program yeah. as an individual. Um, I also just happened. I, I there was a school record that recently somebody took my record, which is totally fine. But um, <laughs> but I some I broke some type of record, which was really cool. And this tournament meant a lot to me because my I was playing in the tournament me and my dad had been working on a couple of things and I just remember that the tournament was going okay and um and I just remember thinking okay enough with trying to like hang it on to tight enough with trying to win yeah. this I'm just gonna work on what me and my dad have been working on yeah and I guess it's just one of those things where I maybe I wasn't just so worried about playing such good golf and I was just kind of curious about what me and my dad had talked about that morning yeah and then all of a sudden Vani I started playing so well oh and my gosh. to the point where I was playing so well but like I wasn't freaking out so I guess it's what you call like being in flow or in the zen yeah <laughs> um, 
And then, and so all of a sudden I was leading. Um, and then I came back the next day and played well and super cool. I was in Boston and my brother was in Boston at the time. So he got to see me. Um, and I think it's the only big tournament my parents have ever seen me like, you know, or somebody from my family has been able to like watch yeah. uh, just me like take it home, you know, but it was just so cool because it was kind of a, like, a, a, like a, what me and my dad are doing works, you know, what yeah. me, you know, you know, you have those moments where everything you believe in the process, but you have those little like, uh, you know, like it's been tough lately let me just figure out you know am I going down the right path and that tournament really just told me like what you and your dad are doing and how you're training and how you're doing it it does work just yeah keep going you know and that win was just so cool I mean just the fact that I won it by myself and my brother was there and I literally just used what me and my dad had been doing so um I'm very proud of that win and the fact that it was a Richmond Spider win I think was a was a kind of a cherry on the top so you travel, how often do you travel? So it's been a little bit different than the past years because we, golf works kind of similar to, the best way I can describe it is baseball. We have a mini tours, right? Kind of like the minor leagues. Okay. And in the mini tours, you're trying to play and play and play and just kind of keep climbing until you can finally get to the point where you, you, you earn your LPGA tour card is what you call it, a tour card. Um, and I did that for a while and it was a great experience one because I had the sponsor backing so um, you know my expenses were covered by them but what also helped was to get the experience of uh, of just being on the road what life on the road really is all about and it got me to you know be in cities that I've never been to and learn how to be comfortable and I learned how to be comfortable when you're uncomfortable pretty much. Yeah. Um, but I did that for three years. And then I kind of realized that I wanted to take a different path, which is the Monday qualifier path. The LPGA has Monday qualifiers. So you go to Monday to a Monday, which is just an 18 hole tournament. You try to finish top two out of a field of 50. And if you do, then you get to go and play that week on the LPGA, which is awesome, which is so cool. Um, and I've, and I think I mentioned earlier, I've played in one LPGA tournament, which was a little life changing. Uh -huh. Um, so I'm trying to do that more and that schedule is a little bit more scattered. So, um, it's not as consistent as a mini tour. There's not like, there's a set schedule, but it's just a little bit more of a inconsistency. Like I can be on the road for three weeks and then I can be home for a month and then same thing. But I figured that was the best rhythm for how me and my dad work instead of me going on the mini tour and being on the road for God knows how many weeks. Um, and I like that with the Monday tournaments, it's only one day. If I get in, I stay the whole week. If I don't, I come back home and me and my dad get to work in again. So um, same thing. That was kind of, you know, for a, a, a huge goal of, of me when I started was to win a mini tour event. But then now I've changed paths, talking about what we were talking about earlier. So now yeah. it's just qualify into a Monday qualifier, you know? So yeah. that's where I talk about like, you know, there are goals, but you have to let them change a little bit. So are there any female golfers that you look up to that you like are kind of like, you're like, you know, I want to be kind of like that, but I know you want to be your own person, but that you really look up to? Yeah, I am. Um... I, you know, Lorena Chua was a big Mexican golfer. She won so many events and she retired early. I think she was, I, I want to say she was probably 27 when she retired. She was like right, up, right, right at my age. Um, but I've heard a lot of people speak very well of her, that she was very kind to her competitors, but she was out there to win. You know what I mean? Which is, I think, a really cool, cool and hard thing to do at the same time. Um, but she she won so many tournaments in such a short amount of time. And she, you know, as I'm a Mexican and she represented Mexico, um, she just did a lot for those Mexican players. Um, and it was cool that she kind of made that presence in, in the golf scene um, for Mexico, which was really cool. Um, I've gotten the chance to meet her a couple of times. She's just very down to earth. And I think that's 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 so cool. You know, I've also... Yeah. Recently saw Annika Sorenstam. She was a huge golfer, also just very dominating during her time. Um, and again, I saw her and I was like, gosh, how cool. Just, just so cool. You know, just so calm and confident in what she does. So I think those are the two golfers that 
I really enjoy, um, I, I enjoyed watching them kind of, you know, going on YouTube and watching all the things they did. <laughs> has there been like one game of golf that you've ever played that has been, and I know you talked about your win. That was incredible. Um, is there any, another game that you've just like, I don't know, there was just something different about it and it just felt so good. And yeah, there's, um, there's like this, I don't know, trying to figure out where I one time saw this little like YouTube clip of Oprah Winfrey. And she said that she was like, you have to listen to the whispers. And I've always been a little curious about what she means by that. But I do remember there's this one day that my coach at the University of Richmond let me go play by myself. And I was playing lights out like by myself. And I just remember, I distinctly remember where I was and just thinking like, I can do this. Like I can play yeah. in, a, in that, you know? And I think when Oprah said like, listen to the whispers, this, you know, when things aren't going the way you want it to go, I like go back to that day a lot, often. You know, and I was just like, I've just, I've just had a couple moments, kind of like where I was at Pebble Beach, kind of like where I was at that course where I was like, these are, these are it. And whether I get it, uh, get to where I want to get to it, it doesn't really matter. Like those moments were, are just so significant where you just kind of feel like, I don't know, the universe, the world, whatever it is, you know, but I remember that day very, very clearly of just thinking like, this is cool. This is awesome. You know? So, um, that's, that's a day that I played and I was just like, this is, this is, you know, this is a day I'll remember for a while. And I have. So what do you think about, have you ever had someone give you advice and that's like just stuck in your head and who, yeah. who was that? Yeah. Interesting. I had a, so when I was a college player, I was just, I, I was the definition of college player, like always practicing and just playing and playing and trying to hit the ball as far as I can. Um, and I was, and I often, I love the golf course where I was at in college. I felt like I attended the golf course and I would go to school rather than attend school and go to the golf <laughs> course. You know what I mean? But I, I met so many interesting people there and the staff and the members were so nice to me. And there was this guy who his name's Nick Austin and he had he had played professional golf, played on the mini tours and things didn't work out. And now he was working at this golf course. And I just remember, and he must've been, he must've been around my age, like 27 while I was 18. And I remember him telling me, and he just pulled me aside and he told me, Elsa, as hard as you work in golf, you have to work that hard in everything else in your life. And he was like, don't forget that. And I was like, what? That's, I was like, that's pretty deep. <laughs> but I like that because yeah. I think he was right. You know, I think that if, you know, I, I think that all everything, everything affects everything at the end of the day, you know? So if I know if, if I'm not working hard in my diet, it's going to affect my golf. If I'm not working hard yeah. in my friendships, they're going to affect golf. If I'm not working in you know, being and, a good daughter, yeah. a good sister. Yeah. So um, I really like that advice. And I think it's, um it's, it's definitely, you know, it, it, you know, till this day, I, I still remember and I try to remember that with everything that I do. Well, I want to ask you, so our listeners, what would you actually tell them uh, about you and your path? And if they wanted to do something similar, what would be your advice? My advice, I think this is going to sound so cliche, but I think when people say like, just start is like, it's like the biggest thing, right? Yeah. Like I don't, I think sometimes people want to start with like a bang, like even if it's just working out, I'm, I'm so big on like start with five minutes a day and then, and then from there you'll figure it out. And I think there's even as I've been doing this for 17 years, I think that there's still little things like a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't sure if I should go to a tournament and I was kind of like ooh, hesitant because I didn't feel like my golf game was all where I wanted it to be. Yeah. But I was like, I have to go. I just have to practice just being a little bit brave and just learning how, like I'll figure it out on the go. And it ended up being a great tournament. Like yeah. I played great. I had such a good time. I met some wonderful people. And I think that's kind of where, you know, I, I'm, I'm very big on like the, the baby steps. And, and once you get there, don't worry, like you'll figure out what's your next move but you have to somehow just kind of start 
you know, and yeah. um, I definitely don't think you have to throw everything away your career or everything to, to just start. I think it's just, you know, if it's writing or whatever you want, just start writing just a little bit at night. And then, and then from there, you kind of, you've kind of, uh, you kind of, I don't know, I've always kind of said like something that sticks in my mind is kind of like, let the dream change you. Yeah. In the sense that if there's something you want to do and you're not a morning person, you might have to become a morning person, yeah. you know, but it's just kind of like what everybody says, right? Take that first step. But I think it's, it, it is, it does help a lot in that. That, you know, that's so true. And actually, in probably 80% of these podcast episodes that I've done, that is the whole thing is just start, just jump yeah. in and start doing something to start yeah. moving you along the path. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty incredible. And I totally believe that. I did the same thing with this podcast. I was yeah. scared. My yeah. first interview, and then I had an interview and <clears throat> one of the people, I got so embarrassed in the interview that my face just turned completely red. But you know what? It's okay. You know, you just got to jump in and start and yeah. you start getting comfortable and and you start learning like the direction, you know, mm -hmm. where it's yeah. taking you or where you don't want it to take you, you right. know? And so, yeah, just jumping in. I, I, I totally yeah. agree. So tell us, do you have any tournaments coming up in San Antonio or is there anywhere we, we could see you? The, so the one tournament that's for sure that happens often that's the closest is Dallas. Um, okay. I, I, I really like the Texas Women's Open that's held usually around June. And that's pretty much the closest tournament that I know that's like for sure. Okay. Um, there's an LPGA tournament in Dallas. I just tried to qualify, but I didn't get in. But that's another event that's kind of reoccurring year after year. And if I'm not playing on the LPGA, you're going to find me at the Monday qualifier because I'm trying to get into the event. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, fortunately, that's the closest. There is a major championship um, in Houston that's going to start soon. But um, but I have to, you know, that's that's for the top top girl so I'm hopefully I'll be there you're gonna be later. there I know you will you will <laughs> you got it going girl thank I love you, it thank you. <laughs> um so how can listeners find you like if they want to just follow you and see what you're up to where's the best place to find you yeah I think definitely Instagram I like Instagram a lot I think it's so cute and I think people get so creative on it so I'm on it I'm looking at what other people are doing often and I try to post as much as I can on there um so instagram's my best one which is elsa diaz and apparently that was taken so it's elsa diaz underscore 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 but it should be the first one that pops up awesome. elsa diaz pro golfer i'll, I'll be on there and yeah y'all can follow me like i said i try to find like post like the funny things that happen on the road the things that i hear and um and also just kind of the cool places and cool you know people we get to meet your posts are really cool too. I love what you do. I'm like, Thank oh, you. I'm going to steal that idea. Yes. <laughs> That's what it. it's for. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today? I think, uh, I think we pretty much covered most of the questions. I, I think what sparks inspiration for you, I may not have asked you that, but I think. We yeah. Can... Yeah. I definitely think, um, I definitely think I don't I, I think sometimes people think that you know uh I I I would I do what I would like to say is that I I think or for people like me even people doing small things is like an inspiration to me. I think people sometimes don't realize how they can be inspiring other people even if you don't know them. You know there's a young kid that's been going to my gym and I and he's he's probably like 13 14 years old and I'm like I love that and that pushes me you know I recently had a friend who was trying to get into law school and now like a year later I didn't I haven't seen her for a year she is like a top bodybuilder and I am oh, like wow. how crazy I am I'm so proud of her and I and that's inspired me you know yeah. and I just I think for people, it's just like, you never know, like, it, you know, even as, as a professional golfer and, you know, she's just starting out in her sport. It, it, it's, you know, it's, I'm a person who gets inspired by a lot of different things. So anything, you know, that you do, I think people, people notice, people look, you know, and I think you're inspiring a lot more people than you think. I, that's what I believe, you know. Oh, that 
wasn't so inspiring. You are inspiring. This whole oh. interview is incredible. You're amazing. Oh, well, thank you. But thank you so much for being here today. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And um, we'll stay in touch. I love this. Have you ever thought about being inspiration? Just little things that you do that you could possibly be inspiring someone. Send me a message. I'd love to hear from you about what you thought about this podcast. And don't forget to check out previous episodes. You know, they are so incredible and always inspiring. And share them with a friend. I would really love for you to help me get this inspiration out into the world and appreciate you so much. Don't forget, I have a new membership page. I share inspiring messages every week. So just visit bonnielang.com, subscribe to this podcast. Also, if you know someone that would be a great guest for this podcast, let me know. I'd love to hear about them and have them as a guest. Have a wonderful day. I'm sending you peace, love, happiness, and hugs.